Our last attempt to enter the Amazon jungle in Peru was stopped due to dangerous roads. This time in Bolivia, our attempt to enter the jungle was threatened by indigenous peoples protesting the new road from Brazil to the Pacific. So we decided to fly to the village of Rurumbaki, from where we could arrange a guided tour of the world-famous Madidi National Park. It was snowing when we left El Alto, the world's highest commercial airport at 13,000 feet. An hour later, we descended into the tropical humid heat of the Amazon, landing at the village of Rurunabake on the banks of the Beni River. Here we met our local guide Nelson and headed downstream for a three-hour ride. We got to see firsthand how the local people live on and from the river. After arriving and settling in at the Sereri Eco Lodge, we started to finally explore the Amazon jungle, a lifelong dream of ours. Nelson knew this area like the back of his hand and soon we were immersed in its magical world. He explained to us how the indigenous peoples gathered the sap of this tree, which they then used to asphyxiate the fish in the river, which after washing thoroughly they could eat safely, since the poison was not ingested by the fish. This tree has red roots, causing any attackers to believe it is toxic, which it actually is not. Any creature pursuing the fruit of this tree will find it tough going, whilst this tree provides shelter for one of the many species of bats. Nelson is also very knowledgeable on the use of some of the jungle plants for medicinal purposes. Famous in South America because that vine is, <coughs> is very good medicine for many different kind of disease. Nelson knows where a rare harpy eagle is nesting and takes us to see it. We are lucky to see a healthy chick waiting for mom to return with dinner. Further on down the trail, we see a tiny hummingbird nest with a newly laid egg in it. And while we silently watch, mom settles gently down on it. We are surrounded by life. Tiny ground frogs are well camouflaged and the brightly colored ones want to be noticed because they are highly toxic. Fortunately, the only snake we stumble across is busy shedding his skin in his hole. Just his body, then its head is Mus done. Conmon musurana. Conmon musurana. Conmon musurana. <laughs> Come on. Some rescued spider Come monkeys on. are determined to accompany us on our leisurely cruise <laughs> along one of the many rivers flowing through the reserve. He's holding on for dear life. On the banks, we spot the Hoetzin, a beautiful bird which lives in the swamps of the Amazon. They are unusual in that their young possess two large claws on each wing, leading scientists to link the species with fossils of the dinosaur era. This spot is perfect to try our hand at some piranha fishing. Pull like this. Look. Another yellow piranha. We let the expert Nelson remove the hooks from their dangerous and powerful jaws. Take chance. Take. Follow me, follow me, follow oh, me. Wow, that's the white piranha. So with dinner in hand, we return to the lodge where the piranhas are grilled and we enjoy them under the gaze of a curious tarantula. After dinner, we go on a night walk and see this delicate butterfly laying its eggs in some of the Amazon's famous tree frogs. The next morning, the heavens open up and we leave the lodge to go in search of other Amazon creatures on the nearby Pampas, which is only accessible by 4x4. The rains have made access to our lodge challenging, but eventually we do make it. Fortunately, the sun breaks through and we are rewarded by seeing many interesting birds and insects on our walk through the bush. Nelson points out a jabiru stork, one of the world's largest birds nesting in a tree in the distance. Wow, perfect. Did you say to me that's a male? Yeah, How do you know? Because he is getting angry. Is that jacama? Rufus tail jacama, yeah. There's a blue and yellow macaw. That's beautiful. That's the biggest macaw that we have in Wenhoi. They're all big.
What's he called? Lettered Arasari. Nelson's sharp vision spots a porcupine high up in the tree. I think he's sleeping. Yeah, I think so too. Because his his eye is closed. Do, do they often climb trees? No, they live on the tree. Oh, they live on the tree. Yeah, but well, they they can jump, but in the daytime, they are for protection. Nelson comes through again by spotting what we have been searching for for hours: a beautiful sloth. Wow, that's perfect. He's just hanging there. <laughs> Wow, that's good. Funny face. He's got a cute face. Mm. Has he got good ears? The sloth's camouflage is perfect, and we retreat happy to have seen one. We then head to the nearest river to seek what we have really come all this way to see, the rare, unique and endangered Amazon pink dolphin. After emptying the canoe, we drift downstream, our eyes and ears straining to catch a glimpse of this beautiful strange creature. The dolphin breathing up ahead. And suddenly we are surrounded by them. The dolphins are here. There's one right, oh right here. Where, a caiman? Yeah, there. The presence of caimans in the water dissuades me from swimming, but Nelson takes a quick dip. Where's the dolphin? Ooh, that was nice. We watch them for many hours and only leave when the light starts to fade. Whoa! Oh, two together! I think I may have got that. With our hearts full of gratitude, we watch as the dolphins follow us home, and with a final tail flap, they are gone. This is our last evening in the Amazon, and we sleep deeply. A wonderful weariness has taken hold. The rains we had previously have not dried up, and we find the road back to be a swamp. A swamp that soon ensnares us. The tour company having no recovery gear, we have to improvise. We went forward an inch. Oh, we went back an inch. Janet supervises proceedings. We are so deep in that mud. After hours of struggling in the tropical heat and not moving an inch, I am beginning to feel despondent. So we hire some locals with bikes who take us on the ride of our lives through the bush. On arriving sore but safely in Rurumbaki, we board our one hour flight back to La Paz. As we climb out of the tropical jungle and over the snow peaked Andes, I reflect on all you have seen in the last week. Landing back in civilization comes with a jolt, and on the drive to retrieve our camper, I can't help but think about the interconnectivity, fragility and beauty of the Amazon. Will it be around for my grandchildren to experience?